Hey guys, what's going on? Um, before the video starts, I would just like to address that my uh, my thoughts were everywhere in this video. It was from going from like one thing, perfect team car, to another like life choices you should make. Um, I'm basically talking about how the car that you get is going to determine your actions and your choices as you move on in life. Um, that's basically how it for me. You know, getting this car allowed me to work harder and pursue new things in my life to pay off the car and uh, you know basically grow as a whole so if this video is a little bit jumpy jumpy I apologize for you guys it is kind of all over the place but um, just try to grasp a few things that I'm trying to say throughout this video alright let's just get right into it hey guys welcome back to my channel today I have a really really nice video for y'all I'm um, talking about the perfect teen car okay as you know now this is coming from an enthusiast um, standpoint I am basically talking for somebody who actually cares about sports cars now I'm assuming that everyone that watches my channel is into sports cars and stuff like that and uh, so if those of you who are saying oh a Prius or oh, uh, a Corolla or a Honda Civic um, is a perfect teen car then this is not the video you should be watching this is more for an enthusiast standpoint let's just get straight to the point what I believe is the best teen like the perfect teen car is basically a car that they can um, barely afford now this sounds kind of weird. You might be asking yourself, why do, why am I uh, trying to encourage people to uh, encourage teens to buy cars they can barely afford? Now this video isn't um, like in specific to a particular car, but in my opinion, it's the E90 because it, I wanted this car since I was a boy. Showed you guys from my last video. Um, this is a car I wanted since I was a kid, and I know if I get it, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to take care of it. Now it teaches a responsibility. It's like basically getting a cat or a dog. And um, for example, if you buy a Civic, now I'm not bashing anyone that has a Civic. I'm just saying if you buy a Civic, you are settled with what you have. It's probably paid off cash. You have nothing you owe on it, which means you have no motivation to go any further. You're like, I'm settled. I have a car. Do I need another car? No, I'm only 18, 19. I don't need another car. Um, and that's what really like basically demotiva demotivates people. Well, that's basically what demotivates people. People are going to be buying a car that they're settled with when they even like they're going to work at a job. They're going to get the money and then they're going to go buy a car cash. They should say two to three thousand dollars in average, you know, or like maybe two to five grand in average price range for a teen. Um, and then you're going to probably feel like, oh, why am I working anymore? I have 2K in my bank. I can survive a whole year on gas and food or whatever. I still live with my parents. It's not that big of a deal. I want to focus on school. Okay. Now, you, you do, you're doing all these decisions, you feel like you're going the right direction, and you are going the right direction for a typical person. You are following basically a path everyone follows. Now, when getting a car that's a little bit out of your price range, at least try to get it to where you don't have to finance it, but for example, let's just say your dream car is going to be a BMW. Get the BMW, try to, you know, don't be, be smart about it. Don't get a car with like 150,000 miles. Be smart about it. Get a car, you know, low miles, but get the car that you actually want. Yeah, so get what you want from the start, from the get-go, so you have motivation to pay for it, and even if you finance it, you're not gonna go work, like, you're not gonna be working two to three years to finance a car, and especially the car you didn't even want it from the first place. See, that, that car, you never, and this is, again, from an enthusiast standpoint, if you get a Corolla and it's financed for five years, you are really gonna be, like, unmotivated to pay for that, your monthly payments and everything. But if you get a BMW or whatever the car that you wanted, I mean, I'm just saying BMW E90 because my channel revolves around that. I'm assuming you guys love E90s. Now, if you get this car and you finance it, I'm sure you're going to be working your hardest to make sure it is taken care of, it is paid for. And um, what I'm basically trying to say, guys, from the get-go is buy something that you can afford, that you love, and that will push you to do better. For example, this car, I'm having a little bit of problems with repairs. Now, I'm not feeling this is a setback. This is more of something that's going to be pushing me to work harder. I like how a cop just looked at me right there. Um, I'm Now, I'm pushing myself every single day to make sure I continue YouTube because this is really what I want to do. I make sure I work even harder at work so I don't lose the job that's primarily giving my main income to afford my cars, my basically my every all my equipment for YouTube and taking care of myself. Summoning it all up, buy what you want, don't let anybody change your mind on the car that you want. If you wanted a Prius since you were a kid, get a Prius. I'm not saying don't get a Prius, but get what you want from the get-go, and if it's something that you feel like it's gonna be a struggle, 
but make sure you have a make sure you have a source of income. I actually should have brought this up. You need to have some source of income before buying a car. Okay. Now, if you feel like you're just going to be going on the weekends and mowing lawns, I mean that is and that's considered a job, and I respect that. But is it considered like um, an income that will you know continually grow or be stable? Is it something you know that you you're sure you can pay your monthly payments? You're sure if something happens to your car, you can afford to fix it. Um, Make sure you have some source of income and then work for other incomes and basically grow your name, grow yourself. Um, YouTube is honestly, it is a secondary income for me and I, I'm blessed to have it, blessed to have you guys. And um, I, I, you know, YouTube is just another part of my life that I'm very happy and grateful for. So find what makes you guys happy, find what you know makes you guys strive. I wouldn't have went into YouTube if it wasn't for this car. I got the car, I was like, man, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to afford it, everything on it. Open up a YouTube channel, and honestly, guys, in all honesty, you guys basically paid for my E36. That car was paid for from my YouTube money, and it, to think that I'm only at 5,000 subscribers, and I already got my E36, my drift car, is just mind-boggling, you know? I'm only at 5,000, I mean, I'm not only, five, 5K to me is amazing, but if you compare it to other YouTubers, you know, 5K is not a huge number. I'm still considered, you know, maybe in the 300,000, range of youtubers who are on 5k but i mean for me it's a big deal and i appreciate it now i also I'm about to hit 5k i really do appreciate that as well and if you guys have any video ideas please let me know on my instagram i'll be putting it right here um that'd be great i'm just trying to find out more youtube ideas more video ideas if you guys want to see more of my indicting more of my e36 drift build let me know so if you guys did enjoy the video smash that like button if you guys did feel kind of similar to what i was thinking it's just uh also smash that like button see you guys in the next one peace out she got me saying, yalla, huh, baby I need you to see me Quit with the front and then put your guard down Girl, we know you ain't easy She got me saying, yalla, huh, baby I need you to see me Quit with the front and then put your guard down Girl, we know you ain't easy